My name is Steve Bauer. As it says in the slide, um, I uh, lead uh, search infrastructure at Bloomberg. Um, <clears throat> I myself have been working in uh, enterprise web search for about fi almost 14 years now um, at uh, Fast Search and Transfer, um, another startup called uh, Ativio. And um, today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the search analytics um, that we've been doing at Bloomberg. Um, we have a number of challenges in that area, and uh, I'll talk about some of those challenges as well as the, the search analytics component we built uh, to solve some of those problems. So a little bit about Bloomberg, just uh, I'm sure a lot of people know the name. Um, we're the largest provider of financial news and information um, in the world. Um, and we have gotten to this place by uh, basically being able to quickly deliver uh, that news and information both accurately and in a timely fashion to our clients. Um, and we've done this by building extremely high performance systems to deliver that information. Um, <clears throat> we've developed, like a, a, in, over that time, a lot of proprietary systems, um, and we use a lot of commercial systems, and uh, right now we're, we're really looking heavily at uh, the open source side of things. I'll talk about a little bit of that um, as we go along. Cool. Um, just a little bit about my team. There's a, there's a bunch of other people here from Bloomberg you see around. Um, we kind of have four roles uh, across the business. Both, uh, first is infrastructure. We have like a search as a service platform. Um, with uh, billions of documents, hundreds of collections that we support um, across the business. Search has become uh, huge, um, well, has been huge, um, but uh, with our platform, it makes it really easy for people. Uh, we also provide kind of consultancy throughout the business, uh, you know, kind of standardized things, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, we also have a machine learning team that we're working actively with, um, hopefully have some interesting things next year to show for that, um, open source wise, um, but the machine learning uh, has become a huge part of what we do um, uh, and really marrying up the understanding of what people are looking for and an understanding of the information with uh, the data that we have. Um, and the last piece is unified search. Um, we have an enormous array of information. So in these collections that we have, um, we have both textual content, research material, that kind of stuff, but uh, huge amounts of all different types of data, financial data. Um, and uh, <clears throat> our goal is uh, all this information is in some way connected. Um, you know, if a uh, you know, football player breaks an ankle or something like that, right, they have a contract with a PR agency, they have a contract with a um, you know, marketing firm or Nike or whatever, uh, you, know, you want to be able to understand that connectivity. So one of the things we've been really investing in is this concept of unified search. So enough about that. Um, talk a little bit about our challenge. So uh, this is a screen uh, from the Bloomberg terminal. Um, if you want, uh, we have like our little booth out there. You can take a look at uh, more of what it can do and some demos running. Um, but this screen is actually uh, a kind of, a, I would say, typical screen that we provide. Um, uh, you can see it's a, it's a breakdown. This is actually uh, information about mergers and acquisitions. Uh, it's a breakdown um, uh, across a number of different facets, a number of different types of facets. Um, and uh, providing uh, like kind of analytics on top of that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we've looked at a number of um, kind of uh, different types of systems for solving this. You know, obviously you can do some of this with databases potentially. Um, things like uh, OLAP cubes and stuff like that can help with some more complex stuff. Um, <clears throat> but uh, one of the challenges we have is that we have this data moves relatively quickly, and we wanted to be able to perform these types of analytics on that data that's coming in kind of uh, in real time. Um, and I think the other aspect of it is, is that, uh, as I was saying, we have a huge different variety of uh, types of information that we're dealing with. Uh, so, you know, taking the time to, you know, set up an OLAP cube uh, uh, or, like, configure the index fields on a database and all that stuff is often uh, too slow for the pace of uh, the development that we want to be able to do. Um, you know, if someone wants to slice their data in a different way today, they should just be able to do that. They shouldn't have to, you know, mess with the system to do it. So, um, so a little bit about um, our approach for this analytics component. Um, so uh, we chose to, to build this in solar. Uh, solar provides an excellent platform for filtering this data. You know, obviously you can do like date range filtering, filtering by you know all kinds of keywords. Um, <coughs> also, the, the faceting infrastructure in solar is, is pretty fantastic for, for actually breaking down this data and, 
um, in, in getting aggregations. It also deals, uh, of course, well with like you know fast moving data sets and um, you know dealing with like kind of large result sets and so forth. Um, <clears throat> Our initial implementation, we looked at using the stats component. I don't know how familiar people are with the stats component. Um, we, we quickly ran into kind of um, some issues with the stats component. Uh, mostly, uh, it, it's, it's a bit simplistic in its implementation. Um, <clears throat> it also lacked um, the full faceting capabilities of Solar. There was like a very small piece of the faceting implementation that was kind of just cut and pasted into uh, the stats component. Uh, to make it do what it was going to do, and and the, and the statistics that it provided were very rigid, just giving you like min, max, average, um, and maybe I think mean and sum of squares or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so the, the the value of them was limited. Um, so we set about kind of trying to really see what we could get solar to do, um, and uh, and and so we started down the road to building our uh, a new component inside solar um, to see kind of how far we could push solar to be able to do these types of analytics. Um, uh, kind of one of the first things we thought about was uh, because of our initial view of that, we started working within the stats component to try to retrofit it to add a, you know, a bunch of new statistics and things like that. We quickly realized that what we needed is actually like a really nice pluggable framework for injecting um, these statistics into and for dealing with faceting so we could add different types of faceting. Um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll just flip down uh, next slide here. One of the key features uh, that really dro drove this and allowed us to really do this is doc values. I think it was added in maybe the 4.4 version of solar. I don't quite remember exactly the timing. It's a, you know, a couple years back now. Um, but doc values are really cool. Um, <clears throat> they basically provide columnar access to data in fields within your index. Um, uh, so that uh, rather than, uh, I think, uh, if you were here for the previous talk, Yolanda was talking a little bit about uninverting fields. Uh, solar also, uh, often, uh, for different things, sorting and faceting, will take a field that's in the inverted index and uninvert it, which is kind of a weird way to say that, but it basically creates a mapping of uh, the uh, internal ID for the document to a value in a particular field. Um, <clears throat> This uh, poses a big challenge when you're trying to get uh, near real time and, and utilize that, that functionality because if you have a relatively large index, you're constantly uninverting, which often takes quite a bit of time to, to uninvert, um, whereas uh, doc values provides that uninverted view um, with the expense of additional storage. But you know, hard drives are relatively cheap these days. So. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the other nice thing is that the, this data leaves, uh, a lot of it lives off heap, um, so we can do this without having to um, <coughs> pay the pain of having to, you know, deal with uh, GC and, and so forth um, for a lot of this. Um, <coughs> and that also is, plays into the, the, the whole idea of um, achieving kind of near real timeness with this data, because when this stuff is getting memory mapped, uh, it, when you build a new segment, it's already in the disk cache, which means it's already in memory to be memory mapped, uh, which makes it uh, really costless to reload. Um, cool. So a little bit about the component. Um, the component itself, uh, we started from the ground up. Uh, we tried to build it in as kind of isolated a way as possible. Uh, uh, one, make it easier to work with, but also so that the integration into solar proper uh, wasn't very complex. I, I think there's like two uh, files that you have to modify in the solar distribution plus adding all the files th or the the code um, from this into a separate package directory um, and you have the whole thing going um, we built this over the summer of 2013 um, the uh, the initial implementation we did uh, we directly used the doc values apis I'm not sure if people have played around with them um, they're uh, very powerful, but they're very different for different types of fields. So you have like a single valued numeric field versus a multi valued string field. The actual APIs for accessing them are very different. Uh, it created some complexity in the code pass we were trying to um, create. Um, and so we started using the field cache implementation, uh, which, if you have doc values turns on, uh, it will uh, utilize doc values. But if you don't, it'll actually uninvert. So you can use this with or without it. Um, but it'll perform better with it. So, um, <clears throat> we took a look at uh, the the faceting code uh, in this in the in the facets the standard faceting uh, code in Solar, um, and 
we took that code and refactored it in such a way that we could plug in uh, different events at, at the life cycle of processing um, facets. Um, <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit more uh, later about some of the features we added and so forth there. Um, and in, in, in addition to the faceting, we created uh, a language for describing um, the statistical expressions that you want to express at each point of the analytics request. Um, and as I said, uh, this is available as a contrib module in the 5x branch, or there's a patch on the solar ticket uh, for 4.8 plus. So, so uh, a little bit about um, features. As I mentioned, um, we created like a, a pretty flexible framework for both um, adding new types of faceting, but also adding um, uh, new types of statistics. Um, and I'll talk about some of the things we support already, but um, if you have additional like uh, operations that you'd like to perform in, um, in, uh, within the module, like, it's pretty easy to add those in. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do uh, is uh, oftentimes when you're trying to build these screens with all different breakdowns of data, you're submitting multiple requests to the back end. Um, uh, but uh, that also means that you're executing queries multiple times, so forth, and creating multiple round trips that are going back to our uh, infrastructure. One of the things we want to do is provide a way that people could get all of the data they needed to build a single screen in one request. Um, <coughs> so uh, the, uh, the, we created a, a thing called an analytics request. Uh, you can have multiple analytics requests as part of a single query, um, so you just can stack them on. Um, within each analytics request, you can have multiple facets of different types, field, range. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then within each uh, request, uh, you can have uh, different statistics, which means you can have the, like the same facet. Uh, like if I can facet on one field um, with a certain set of configuration, I can facet on the same field again with a different configuration with this in, within the same query. Um, that's really useful for like uh, doing breakdowns over different time ranges and, and stuff like that. So a little more about faceting. Um, we support basically all of the functionality in the standard uh, solar faceting. We don't currently support pivot faceting, uh, but uh, we support all the, the basic functionality there, all the options, all the types that it supports, um, as well as multi-value fields. Um, yeah, so, and, and things like lim limit, offset, and min count, which are features that the stats component, while it did support field faceting, it didn't actually uh, support some of those options. Um, we also support uh, the ability to sort the facets. Normally, you're just either sorting by, um, usually by the count, um, but we, can, we allow you to sort by any calculated statistic with that, that's within that facet uh, or within that request. So uh, you can sort by like the median value of uh, the values within a, um, a facet bucket, so forth. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, range faceting, um, again, similar to the standard sol uh, solar range faceting. Um, the only uh, really neat thing that we did is we made it so that you could dynamically calculate both the range and gap um, on the range facet. So you could say, I want my range for, my, uh, for this range facet to be the min and max of the date value in my result set, and then I want actually just 100 you know, buckets and then provide an equation for, you know, dividing the min minus max divided by the, that and you get, like, exactly what you want so you don't have to, like, pre-calculate that or run one query to get the min max and then run another query to, to do that. So as a single request, the, the, the faceting is, um, and the statistics calculation are done kind of in sequence. So you have field faceting, range faceting, and then query faceting. So any piece that comes before it, you can take advantage of data that was calculated previously, which is really kind of nice. Um, <clears throat> the last piece here is uh, query faceting, standard, uh, similar to the standard query faceting in the, in the facet component, except that you can, like I said, you can use information that was garnered earlier in it to generate the queries that you're actually um, going to put into your query facets, um, which is kind of a neat feature. Right. So uh, in terms of basic operations, there's like kind of map, mapping and reduction operations. Uh, you have uh, kind of your standard basic math uh, functions, constant values. Uh, we support like the date math um, that Solar supports, so you can use that as part of any of your expressions, um, string operations, so forth. We also have like, um, we've been very careful to add support for uh, handling uh, missing values in these calculations. We're trying to calculate like a mean or a median. When you have missing values in that, like what does that mean uh, to your actual calculation? Do you want that to mean 
that, that value is zero or it should it be discounted completely, so forth. Um, so we add the ability for you to control what happens when there is a missing value um, in your data set. Um, and then we talked a little bit about reduction operations. So you have uh, <coughs> basic kind of statistical things um, that you would get out of uh, like the existing stats component um, to some extent, min max uh, count, which is if you use count, it's effectively the same as like uh, you know standard faceting, uh, where you just get the count. But we also um, supply uh, you can do a count of missing values. You can also get unique value counts out of uh, facets. And then you have more complex things like uh, sum of squares and mean and standard deviation, um, as well as median and percentile calculations, which are super powerful. Um, so uh, some examples um, of types of things you can do. So uh, this is actually the first one here is a real world example that we have in production right now is uh, doing calculating weighted averages. So you can see here we have both uh, like uh, mapping and reduction operations, and you can wrap them within each other. So uh, I can sum one particular field, uh, multiply, uh, and then uh, you know multiply two field value, two fields together, take the mean of that, and then divide you know that by the sum. Um, so you can really stack these things in any sort of way you'd like um, to create really complex expressions. Uh, uh, here's another example of calculating variance. Again, same thing with like constant values as well as uh, the uh, mapping and reduction. And uh, even more complicated example of a t-score, just showing kind of like the kind of complexity that you can create uh, within these expressions um, when you're doing it. So uh, a little bit about uh, how we kind of use it. Um, <coughs> so the screen I showed before, um, and this, this screen as well, uh, showing uh, some breakdowns uh, in this example uh, on the top here, you can see uh, we're breaking down, this is again mergers and acquisition information, we're breaking down uh, uh, deal sizes uh, by industry and then segmenting it um, across whether they're acquirers or targets and, and so forth and providing it. This is, the, the, this is all calculated in that screen that I showed previously earlier on in the slide presentation are the result of single queries that go to our back end. Um, the, the other thing that's really cool is uh, with the stuff I was talking about, about range faceting and dynamically calculating them, it makes it really cool for generating uh, charts. Uh, so you can you know, generate charts with multiple statistics in them that are like auto fit so you know that you have a certain amount of granularity that you want to display on your screen, right? You don't want to pack too much information into a chart because then your client gets you know, like a big bulge of memory that it's coming to it or you know, data that it has to represent. So you know I, I want to have this many data points. Um, and then it will kind of just, you know, using that dynamic range um, and gap functionality, um, ca automatically have it calculate the, 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 the data points that should fit into the graph and return that back. Um, it also makes, if you want to like have like a graph where you just zoom in dynamically on it, um, you can do that stuff without having the UI have to figure out all that math and stuff. You just send the request to the back end saying, I want this range now and calculate X number of data points. So, uh, and we use this actually ourselves. We have, uh, within our infrastructure, we collect like from JMX and a whole bunch of other places. We dump this information um, into solar indexes and we kind of uh, use that to produce uh, analytics about our solar collections. So you can look at like QPS across a cluster and dive in and drill in um, and see that stuff and it works really nicely. Um, <coughs> uh, this stuff, um, so I'll talk about the future in a second. But uh, this stuff is in production. Uh, we use this on a number of uh, relatively high profile applications uh, and uh, it's hit for about a year and a half now. So it's, it's been pretty solid. Um, <coughs> we have use cases that kind of range from uh, like uh, more real time aspects uh, to people using this as actually like a compute engine uh, to pre-calculate you know, huge numbers of chart, uh, chart data and so forth in batch. Um, so kind of both aspects of it work pretty well. Um, and it, uh, I'll say that we have, we're doing this on indexes um, uh, that are extremely large. So we have uh, one index, it's about 500 million <coughs> records. It performs quite nicely on it. Some of these things, you know, they take a little bit longer to run, um, uh, but usually it's, it's not, a, not a huge issue. Um, so a little bit about future plans. Um, right now, the, this, this component is only single shard. Um, we've been pretty successful in that collection I was describing that's uh, 500 million, it's actually 500 million records in a single shard. Um, and it performs quite nicely and doesn't really kill on memory or anything like that. 
Um, <clears throat> but we'd like to be able to support multi-shard. I think there's a lot of use cases. Uh, this, this component fits into a very, um, I wouldn't say narrow use, set of use cases, but it fits into a set of use cases that are um, maybe uh, more than what you would want to do in a database, but less than you, what you'd want to do in a, maybe a, you know, like a larger scale, like MapReduce type um, environment where you're you know, kind of operating more in batch. It fits in that kind of real time, um, uh, more varied types of data um, type environment. Um, we'd like to expand that, and, and going multi sharder will allow us to build like enormous indexes. Um, some of these things are kind of complex. Calculating percentiles and medians are non-trivial when you're do doing that in a distributed fashion. When you have to provide like 100% accuracy on the data. Um, <coughs> also, I'd like to add support for pivot faceting, so we can get more um, more breakdowns of the data. I, I think that'll allow us to even have. There are cases where you still need to present more than one request to the back end um, because you want to get multiple layers of breakdowns. Uh, we can reduce that with pivot faceting. Um, right now, the statistics that we produce are only allowed to be on um, single-valued fields. Uh, we, there's only one case that we found where this is really not helpful, which is uh, wanting, wanting to calculate unique values. Um, having it on multi-value fields is also kind of complicates thing. If you can think of calculating like a uh, an average across a set of data when you have multiple values, you know, what do you divide by? Is it the number of, ro uh, ro you know, rows or is it the number of values? Um, and so we decided to kind of not do that um, just to simplify things. Um, since most of this data is numeric, the, the likelihood of um, kind of doing that, uh, uh, having multiple values there is, is relatively low in our, in our data sets. But uh, we'd like to look at adding multi-value support and, and figuring out the semantics of that in the future. Um, the other thing we'd like to be able to do is um, use the analytics component as a post filter to your result set. So uh, you could calculate statistics and then, you know, let's say lop off everything that's below, you know, every record that falls below the median value um, and just have a, uh, you know, a filtered result set based on the statistics. Um, so that's something we're starting to look at. Um, and also um, uh, look at kind of trying to generalize the faceting implementation a little bit more um, w within this infrastructure. So uh, if you want to check out uh, more about the analytics component, right now um, there's, a, there's a JIRA ticket for it. It has a patch on it for, for we run this on 481 right now. Uh, we have a patch for that. It's on, like I said, on the 5x branch. So it'll end up in the 5 as a contrib module. Um, there's also a PDF attached to this um, with a whole bunch of documentation about it. Uh, as well as uh, you can also, there's a huge number of unit tests that we've built um, that are also uh, in the patch as well. So you can take a look at those, see examples of how the stuff works. And uh, if you're interested more about what we do at Bloomberg, you can check out bloomberglabs.com. We have a whole bunch of stuff about work we're doing in machine learning and search and big data um, stuff. So that, if there, I don't know how much time we have left. Seven minutes. So we can take questions or we can leave it there. Thanks. The max min value, so you're, you want to be able to get the min and max values for uh, like, a, like a collapsed, uh, trying to think. I don't think, uh, the, 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 all the field collapsing stuff kind of interacts weirdly with different parts of the system. I don't know if, I've never actually tried it, so I, I, it might have, I, I, it certainly won't give you the min max value for an individual bucket, um, but you could accomplish the same thing just by faceting Right, grouping is the same thing as faceting, just without you know uh, moving the results in. So you could just do a facet and then calculate the results within that facet, um, and provide that kind of in parallel to the to the grouped results. Well, like, like I was saying, you could calculate that. Like, you could just, um, within the analytics request, you can just um, uh, facet on the same thing that you're grouping by and then calculate a min and max, and you would know that for each bucket. Uh, you might have some issues with, like, the, the groups that are coming back at the top of the result set uh, versus what's coming back in faceting. Um, we can talk more after.
identified stats over facets. Uh, Right. Uh, so with regard to like this kind of existing stats functionality and kind of hang that, this essentially is that, right? So you're basically, you're able to, with any of the basic types of faceting, except for pivot faceting right now, you're, ba you're able to put any analytic, like any sort of statistical expression that you'd like within any sort of, any facet you'd like, or you can do it across the whole result set. I, I haven't seen that ticket. Uh, is that a, I don't know. Uh, we can, uh, can take a look at it. I don't know. I, we definitely haven't. There's no co chairing right now because uh, I just haven't looked at it. So, yeah. It's inside solar. So it's, it, it's just the search component that runs inside, so, inside solar. So you, you can think of it as like a replacement, if, if that, for the stats component. It basically actually has all of the functionality that the stats component, the existing stats component has. Um, so you could think of it that way. And, yep. Right, so we, we basically, uh, we started uh, well, with the faceting implementations and that, that are existing, kind of uh, refactored them into this new code base and then um, and then you know put the statistical stuff within it. I say new code base, but it's literally just a, a, a chunk of code that lives in the solar um, code base. So. Uh, what's the timeline for some of those <laughs> there would be people that were, would be very upset with me if I answered that, so I can't really talk about that. Uh, but we're actively working on this stuff. So. We're, we're currently using uh, uh, the previous risk factors along with uh, the previous factors for two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, for IBAR and uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly the timelines on that, but, yeah. So. Did you all use Flash in any of those um, frameworks? Um, I think that there's definitely room for those. We don't have a use case for providing <laughs> inexact information, <laughs> so we haven't really focused on that. Uh, but, it, like, like I said, uh, like if you wanted, for example, to provide like an inexact median calculation that was maybe more performant or something like that, or an uh, inexact, like, uh, unique calculation, uh, it, there's definitely, like, it's easy, it should be just easily pluggable as a new operator, um, you know, within the, the statistical expression. Correct. It's not going to. Uh, yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. You still have to look at all the data. I mean, you could you could you could do some things that would be allow you to maybe skip over some of it. Um, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Say again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I said. It's on the it's on the on the the, the ticket there, and uh, it will be in Solar 5x as a contrib module. So. Cool. All right. Well, doesn't look like any more questions. We'll leave it there. Thanks for uh, listening to me. Cool. <laughs>